seen an archaeological dig, either in person or on one of those TV shows like Time Team, you know as they dig down into the earth, removing the accumulated layers of decomposed plant material and other debris that's covered the site over the years. You generally only need to dig down a few feet onto the site to go back several hundred years. The deeper they dig, the further they go back in time. Through the Middle Ages, the Vikings, the Romans, possibly even to the Iron Age and Bronze Age settlements. But by going even deeper into the earth, can we go further back in time? Especially when we look at the rock formations which are known as sedimentary rocks. Now, sedimentary rocks are formed by layers of debris and being crushed by the weight of soil and other material on top of them. This pressure can be combined with heat to turn them into stone. The type of rock that is actually formed varies considerably upon the actual material that made up the debris in the first place. Coal can be formed from plant material which sank to the bottom of a swamp. Limestone is formed from calcium carbonate and marine seashells. Shale is formed by a mud-like clay, whereas the fairly obvious sandstone is formed from sand. The process of turning these substances into rock is a very, very long one. And the surface conditions of a particular area change over time, so do the types of rocks that are then formed. So for instance, an area of desert, the build-up of lots of sand, may form a layer of sandstone. That desert then becomes a swamp, they put down a layer of coal. Then again, if the area becomes totally submerged under the sea, it can then result in forming a layer of limestone. These different layers of rock formations can be seen where earthquake activity or weathering have brought some of these layers of rocks to the surface. These layers can be seen in many places around the world, with one of the best examples being in the Grand Canyon in America. This leads to the question, if digging a few feet of soil can take us back a few thousand years in Earth's history, how far back can digging down through miles of sedimentary rocks take us? Well, fossils trapped within the sedimentary layers can tell us about the life that was present at the time the rocks were being laid down. This can be anything from the bones of dinosaurs, which have since turned to stone, to the trilobites, one of the earliest animals to roam the bottom of the ocean floor. This can give some clues about the relative age of the rocks, but actually doesn't give us an absolute age. We do know that for the variation of fossils and the depth and variation of the sedimentary layers, the formation had to have taken place over several millions of years. But for an absolute age, we need to turn to radioactive decay. Now, the unstable element 235 uranium has a half-life of just over 700 million years and will eventually decay to form the stable element lead 207. The uranium and other radioactive materials are present in igneous rocks, which are the volcanic rocks, which sometimes force their way up through the layers of sedimentary rocks. Now, by measuring how much uranium is present in these rocks compared to the amount of lead, you can then calculate the age of the igneous rocks. And since these igneous rocks were formed by magma forcing its way up through the existing layers of sedimentary rocks, any rocks which are split by igneous rocks must be older than that. Now, putting all this together, scientists estimate that the Earth is around 4.6 billion years old. Now, if the Earth were only 6,000 years old, there would be virtually no lead in the igneous rocks at all, no stone fossils, and sedimentary layer only a few inches thick. Clearly, none of this is the case. So whilst there may be a debate exactly how many billions of years old the Earth is, what most definitely isn't the case is it's several thousand years old. It's patently not possible.